Good morning, good morning, good morning from Florianópolis, Brazil. It's supposed to be winter and this morning it's 20 degrees. Beautiful, no clouds. 20 degrees Celsius, which means it's, it's fucking warm. S uh, yeah. For all you Americans who don't know Celsius. Warm, it's warm. Beautiful sunrise, beautiful waves, except they're a bit savage also. And they roughed my friend Michael up here. His shoulder is in bad shape. He's sitting through it. Today's topic is a hot topic. <laughs> I was on uh, the board with uh, Sophie Josefina, who I've been talking with recently. She did an interview with me and I did an interview with her. And I think she does ex excellent work, really trying to understand men and women, honoring both sides. And uh, yeah, great, great work. And on one of the boards she wrote, where have all the good men gone? And I titled this, where have all the great men gone? Because that's made probably part of the problem is um, the great men are gone because we're trained, is one of the explanations, we're trained to be good boys, we're trained to be good men, we're not trained anymore to be great, men so uh, as soon as we're born our moms our teachers mostly female and a whole society has a culture where we train men to be good boys to do the right thing to tolerate to compromise to appease to not rock the boat to be good men and uh, and you see it yeah from from birth all the way to death you know when we uh, we come out of the womb we have this inner authority that tells us what to do and screams and yells and wants it a certain way. And, and mama teaches us to be good, you know? Well, I would say that, I don't know. I mean, I think as that's kind of a mother's job, you know? Yes. Train us to be civilized, train us to be good, train us to be polite, these sorts of things. I don't, I don't, I don't really see that as the main issue, but that, uh, we, most of us are lacking great men as elders. That's and exactly true. Fathers, great men in our lives, um, who we really respect and admire and, and want to make the same kind of sacrifices that they make and, and live, take on a lot of responsibility. And I, I think uh, partly like what we see happen with the police in America, you know, so many people are... Uh, shaming the police right now and i'm definitely one of the ones who thinks a lot of changes need to be made with how we do our policing and the culture with that but um when we take away the honor for these roles of sacrifice you know police put themselves in harm's way every mm. day and when we take away the honor for for the roles that we would get, you know, what, what is a great man? I think a great man is, is someone who takes, lifts a heavy load, you know, takes on a great mission or takes on great responsibility for his people. Um, you know, he, he, he faces, takes on risk, takes on danger and, you know, stands for something. And, uh, but if there's no honor in that, if there's only, you know, then uh, what, what is the incentive? Mm -hmm. you know, because men will risk their lives. They'll even kill for honor. Mm -hmm. But uh, you take away the honor and there's nothing but like, okay, we'll shame you less if you just do what we think is, is mm -hmm. being a good man. Um, you know, if, if you have... Uh, you know, if you have a boy being raised by a single mother who's angry at men and the masculine and the patriarchy mm. and everything like this and he has no strong men in his life he has you know um he only has that that mothering influence that's angry at the masculine then uh he's just trying to become his mother's idea of a good man there's nothing internal because his his instincts channel him to towards his masculinity Yes. But that's judged by the mother. And he does, so he no longer has any sense of where I should go. Mm -hmm. He can't look to a father figure 
because he doesn't have one, and, and he judges them, and he's trying to go to this like unnatural place of what his mother says is a good man, mm -hmm. and she becomes his authority, and he's just trying to be that version of good, which can never be great. It's, yes. it's you know, I think uh, women's complaint a lot of times is that the man's not, men are not leading, that they're just, uh, they're complacent, they're followers, they're, they're going along, and it's not inspiring. It's not, it's, they're not men that, 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 that inspire the women, the women respect and that they would like to follow. And it's true. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I mean, like I, I was going to get to that point, like we're educated by, we're raised by women and that's not, the, the problem is not that women raises, the problem is like the absence of the masculine, you know? So I, I was going to get to that point. And, and at a whole, I also want to make sure, you know, I, I don't blame, we don't blame anyone, you know, there's no women to blame, there's no man to blame, uh, but, but trying to like unpack the situation that we're in where, yes, there's an absence of, of the masculine, there's an absence of like honoring the masculine, there is a, and, and, and for men, it's really hard to be raised in, it, to be in that, in that culture to become great men. You really have to be a man. You have to be a rebel. You have to be a rebel almost to like to to go against that because everything in our culture uh, dishonors the masculine or 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 the is absence of the masculine. And we have so much, uh, you could say, privilege, like so many great advantages of not having to fight for our very survival, not having to mm -hmm. fight off the neighboring tribe that's going to yes. come for our women or. Yes whatever and so we don't need men in the same way that we once did exactly you know, we don't need them as much as the warriors protectors um we kind of delegate that out we farm that out to the police or the uh -huh. military or whatever something that's kind of outside of us and then uh men are left without these normal yes. masculine roles and uh you know with women now uh very much in the workplace and and, and us living lives that very much often require two parents to, yes. to work, uh, the women oftentimes are making more than the men. And uh, they, you know, like men are, men are not even wanting to go out and make a bunch of money, you know. So oftentimes the women are making more money than the men. And uh, they have, a lot of them have an, an attitude like they don't need men, which in a way, in a way it's true mm -hmm. because they can provide and the protection can be handled by the police yes. and, and the security uh, team guarding the apartment complex or whatever and, and so on. And so uh, in a way they don't need men. Yes. So if we, if we, if we describe it, and I like to do that more than, than blaming anyone, you know, if we describe it that where have all the great, great men gone? Well, they're, go they're not there because we have a culture that cultivates being, becoming a good man, a good boy who appeases, who tolerates, who compromises. And we don't have a culture anymore that, that educates us to be great men. And it's a tragedy. But what I look, what I see also, it's, it's one of the greatest opportunities for men right now to become men. If we as men could see that culture that we're raised in, and if we could stand up against it, if we can rebel against it if we can lead and 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 carve a different path because that's the opportunity that us men today do get you know it's easy to say all oh, the culture or and and it is it's a good way of seeing it there's a culture that doesn't stimulate greatness in men you know but uh but but there is also the opportunity more than ever to become great men to become a great man of your own choosing to choose your own battle to choose your own adventure, to choose uh, the, your own enemy, to choose to become a man by your own choosing, and really carve that path for yourself. So I think it's it's there's a tragedy of the culture that doesn't cultivate greatness in men, but you have the opportunity more than ever to become a great man as well, because every man uh, by himself can make an incredible change. He can he can make his couple family, tribe, community, he could lead that into glory. He could, he could create a complete different uh, paradigm and, and world where he lives in, where, 
where he could be a great man. And yes. uh, that's an incredible I, opportunity that us men have nowadays. I see you uh, kind of framing it more in the terms of the individual, you know, and what the individual man can do. And that's very much like where I, where I've been most of my life is in that paradigm. And now I'm starting to see like more like it's, it's less about this training that we get. And I think it's more that we don't have these great men in our lives, mm -hmm. you know, because like I had a, I had a few, right, right, know, right, and it made a huge difference. And, and I agree with that 100%. And, yes. And, and I, and I, and I think also like for us, you know, as like, what can we do? I would invite us more into like the community response of like, joining coming together with other great men mm. you know it's like yeah there's the, the what we can do it's yes there's 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 a lot that we can do individually and heroically and i just think about a lot of those guys who are i mean it's, in, in a way it's such a it's, it's such a lonely call in a in a in a sad mm -hmm. situation like you think of most guys they're they're without brothers they're yeah, they got all these YouTube videos of self improvement and these things that they can do, and and but I think there's this deep sadness and longing, you know, for real brotherhood, and I think oftentimes it's not named, and oftentimes that that we we tell that guy, well, you know, pick yourself up by your bootstraps, or go see a psychologist, or read a self help right. book, or go to a course, and and I and I and I yeah, just in this moment, I'm feeling some sadness for that, you know, and I'm and I'm. Uh, in this very moment, I'm feeling like it's just a desire for the older men to come back for the younger men. Yes. You know, and to come and, and, and... But that could be your very call to greatness, to be that guy for someone else. Because yes. I completely agree that, like, we could say there's a culture that doesn't honor masculinity. But you could also say there's the absence of masculinity. Yes. You know, that's the same thing. Like, the women raising us is not the issue. It's that there's not the counterpoint of the masculinity. Okay, so you see that and then you could say as a man, you got the opportunity to be great. And how could you be great? Well, be great for your people, yes. which is for your couple, but also means for your brothers. You know, yes. go back for your brother. Be that older brother for another guy. Yes. You know? And that's a that's a, a, a great call for uh, for greatness for for men. And that's a chance that we have. Yes. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking of this. Uh, this young man is about 30 years old who I started working with him with the honor work. And he comes to me and what he really wants for himself, he's working with this older relative male who's very, a very masculine guy in a lot of ways. He once really admired him. He wanted to be like him. But then they had, he didn't know how to, um, I don't know, just, just be with that guy in a way that earned his respect and, mm -hmm. and whatever. So his, his own growth into a man... And to being that man he wanted to be was was stunted, and what he what he came to me wanting for himself was like, he, he wants the respect, he wants to be, uh, be able to be around this guy and and other guys like him in a way where he just has his self respect, which is which is awesome, and it's, and that's what he's going for. But I think the more that he does the the honor work, the more he's seeing like his opportunity even to go back for that guy. Mm -hmm. This guy's even an elder, you know, well older than him, you know. Um, and, uh, I think he's feeling even more the call to brotherhood and, and, and I, yeah, I, I think, I think that's a, that's a great call to the, the, I don't know if you want to say the older guys, but guys, even who are in their twenties or thirties, but they're maybe thinking more in terms of like, okay, I want to become a great man mm -hmm. myself. And so let me go do these things myself and for myself. But the, the biggest opportunity that could even develop himself might be to do it for others. Yes. You know, like younger brothers. And I mean, that's where I have my, that's my story. You know, I, I feel really called to that. Well, go back for your father. Yeah. Yeah. Go back for those older men that, that you know, you might judge that they weren't the man that, that you wanted. Yes. They weren't the father that you needed. And uh, go back for them. Many ways to be great. So, where have the great men gone? They're in our alliance. They're, uh, they're our brothers. And uh, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing, bringing these men 
with great intentions, great aspirations, great ambition, great care, you know, you said together. You, you, you're asking where are the great men gone and <clears throat> to, to uh, kind of tap into what Jordan Peterson talks about. They're, they're buried in the underworld, you know, and we've got to go back and rescue them. And this is, uh, I, the way I see this is they're buried underneath our judgments. You know, our fathers or whatever, mm. these, these men who we don't want to be like, mm. these men who are, you know, maybe like the police, they were too aggressive. Maybe they yes. were too uh, egotistical or arrogant. They were too forceful. They were too, you know, all of these things. Our access to becoming the great men that we want to be and that, that society needs and that our women need lay buried Underneath our judgments. I think that's a great. I, I see the image now. The great man lay buried underneath all of our judgments, you know. And the great thing is, they could you could re resurrect them instantly by honoring them. So you're doing great work by honoring men, you know, because they're they're not just maybe dead, but they're buried alive. I would say. Yeah. They're buried alive and they're waiting to be honored, you know, because not knowing what's missing, not knowing. But as soon as a man feels honored, I told her that, you know, as soon as a man feels honored by a great woman, he's like, fuck this, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm ready to kill and die. I'll slay dragons for my people. I don't care if I die. You know, I got my honor, you know, yes. this beautiful woman is honoring me. Fucking A, I'm killing everything. In my, it, that's <laughs> yes. how it feels. Yes. I, I was honored by a beautiful woman. I'm like, I'm unstoppable, un invincible, you know, so. We, I love that. That's a great image. Where are the great men? They lay buried alive underneath our judgments. Yes. You, know? you bring them alive by honoring them. You start honoring them, you'll see them coming. You know? Yes. They're everywhere. And, and, and there's, uh, there's ways to do that. You know? like some, some people can be thinking, well, of honoring means this or that or the other thing. And it, it may not be effective with the way that they're thinking about yes. it. You know, so that, that I just want to say that there's that there's there's ways of of being affected with that, but I'll yeah I'll 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 elaborate on it. It's it, this, but I also want to add in there before you go into that is just I just want to plant the seed that also our ancestors they lay buried and they're they're dead in a way, but for many enduring lasting cultures, their ancestors are alive. Hmm. Their ancestors live in their daily rituals and hmm. memories and their presencing. Hmm. And we're so individualistic. Like mm. most of us, we don't think about our ancestors. We don't know our ancestors. Yes. We don't know where we come from. Yes. We're cut off and we're just this individual trying to get more success or more Facebook followers or yes. <laughs> more stuff for ourselves. And we're not living in this great story and tradition and, and aliveness of our ancestors. So our ancestors also lay like, buried. Yes. You know, underneath our, our we've forgotten them. And honoring is very much about remembering, re-bringing together into the yes. whole, into the family. So I just wanted to say that. Clan Comen. Anyway, I discovered my heritage. Uh, but yes, I was talking with Sophie about this very thing because she has the concept also of honoring, you know. And uh, and I think it, what anyone who could benefit from this very practical, you know, logical human technologies like the like the honor window that takes someone from from through all process and shows what our judgments really are and then shows underneath the judgment the, the desires you know and comes to a place starting with judgment seeing them acknowledging them comes to a place a logical step-by-step -step, uh, uh, formula and you come to in a place where you can honor that same person that you're that you're judging and so it's not just I mean, we have very little education in it, yeah. honor, and you develop this over decades, you know. And I, I'm I'm just speaking the the power of it because I've I felt it, I've seen it firsthand, you know. <clears throat> and it's a logical formula that takes you from judging someone to honoring someone, and it's so powerful. You it know? takes you takes takes us into our hearts, and uh, remembering with our hearts. Yes, judgment, as I see it, is is a closing off of our hearts. Yes. Right, it's like you're no longer you were in my heart, no longer you're no longer a part. Sophie of me. is watching. Hey, Sophie. Hey, Sophie. 
You're no longer a part of me. You're no longer a part of my heart. You're no longer welcome in my heart. Mm. And that's what it feels like when someone's judging you, right? It's like, and I wonder what really is going on physically in yes. our hearts. You yes. know, like I wish I had the biological, whatever. To yes. understand it. But as we open our hearts back up and remember our people and take them back into our heart, there's a release. Yes. There's a beautiful opening. People come to tears and they feel, you feel the warmth, you feel your heart expand mm. and your wisdom also expands. Your, your, imagine now you're moving in the world with all of your people and your ancestors and your children and your fathers. They're all in your heart and you're moving in the world making choices based on all of them. It's Not incredible. Just on your, your one self. Like I've seen, I've, I've, I've come to a place of honoring people that I judged so severely, you know, and I, man, and I realize, <sighs> I realized how much I was the prisoner of my own judgment, you know, how that was really limited, how that puts a burden on me, being in prison, you know, and that honor really like could shatter that. If you could just, if you could go through the, the process, if you could come the other way, you know, you see the judgments for what they are, and then you develop the desire that's underneath there, you know, what you really want, and then you, you come to a place of honor, you see that person in a different light, and now you walk, like you say, you walk with him in the world in a complete different way, you know, and it's so, it's such a release, like a burden falls away, and it's so powerful. It's not just, oh, I'm relieved of something. You feel at the same time, I'm the one. I fucking did it. You know, yes. it's like, it's like, it's like you, it's it, like a burden is you undo and then you take everyone with you and it's not a problem. you like, you carry in them like Atlas. It's easy. <laughs> you know, you take everyone with you and it's, yeah, it's a, such a powerful thing. We've talked before on this podcast about becoming the warrior and becoming the chief. You know, and, and uh, I think a lot of men today, they don't make the evolution into either one of those, mm. you know, and, um, but especially the chief, you know, I mean, I would really say, I would really say both, but especially the chief, which is, which is when, where you're coming from a place of leading with all of your people in your heart. Mm. And uh, yes, so there's an invitation for people who want to go deeper and learn more about this to I'll, engage with the honor work. I'll summarize. Where have all the great men gone? Great phrase today. They lay buried alive underneath our judgments. As soon as you start honoring man, the masculine, that man, they'll come out of the woodwork, they'll come out of the ground, you know, and say, thank you, here no, I am. <laughs> I think of that scene from Lord of the Rings. Where haven't seen, you haven't seen Lord of the Rings. <laughs> All right, but uh, I'm judging you. You're out of my heart. You are not my people. Kill Bill. She's I can't believe alive. all these movies, great movies, you haven't seen. <laughs> you have your own list. I haven't seen, but Big Lebowski. <laughs> but uh, anyway, there's there's uh, a guy, man, and I can't remember the exact thing to describe it, but um, something happens, like like sis like. The positive version of civilization is about to be ultimately doomed by these uh, these the, the the forces of darkness. Like mm. they're really oh they're they're about ready. The forces of darkness are about to destroy the last remnants of mm. of good people alive in the universe or on the planet. You know, and then something happens, and all these great warriors rise up from the graves. You know, and these great men, these great warriors come back, and they vanquish. The forces of darkness and it's great so i'm just i imagine that's the scene i'm seeing you know these these great men rising up from the grave we're ready and like i wanted to add to it like where have the great man gown they lay buried alive underneath our judgments how do we bring them alive by honoring the masculine honoring your uh, that man and by that I, I don't mean women do it i mean you as a man do it your great father lays buried buried alive underneath your judgment, your grandfather, your ancestor, your brother, he lays buried underneath and you can bring him alive. Yes. You know, you can bring him alive by yes. starting to honor him, yes. honor your father, go back for a brother, honor your ancestors, you know, honor yourself. And you know? be the man that, that the women in your life desire to follow. Yes. 
Man. And it's it's uh, it's great, and I would even say essential for the women to do the work as well. Yes, and for men to do the work of honoring uh, the feminine and, and, and the and the women. And you're not going to say it, but I'll say it. You know, it's not it's not just oh honoring. I'll just start honoring. No, there's a process there. There's a step by step formula, and I I'll I'll speak it till the end of time because it has helped me tremendously. And you can go through it. So reach out if you want to do the honor work, the honor window. And it will change your life. It, you, you will make magic and miracles happen. All right. <laughs> make men great again. <laughs>